welcome back to another episode of Caffeine and Crypto. I'm your host, Vega, with Serpent X Tech, where we go over crypto news while drinking a favorite caffeinated beverage of choice, coffee, energy drink, whatever it might be. I'm going to use a NOS for later because I've got some IT stuff to do to help out a local family friend as normal. They only call you when they need you, but it's been a red week. Start off good, and now it's gone down as my wife's phone rings in the background. Um, wifey's home with me today. There's a fair in town. We might have to go see it. She wants to go see it, but we really need to get some stuff done around this household. Um, I don't know, man. Is this part of the buy the rumor, sell the news situation? Like leading up to the having, right? Bitcoin pumps, get to the having, it dumps, or is it just going to sit? and chop sideways until after they're having and then pump some more you know there's a lot of variables as we've been talking about over the past week that i don't think anybody has a crystal ball for um but we could see here we started the week april 8th right so we started the week we were around this 69156 range right we pumped up about five percent to 72 almost 73 and then now we have fallen just yesterday all the way down to 65k now i'm going to be honest with you when it touched this 65k range i went ahead and threw a little bit in it dollar cost average as days fintech posted in the channel uh live chat because that's the best thing to do right now it's like trying to time these Unless you're sitting in front of the charts 24-7, it's going to be hard to do. So DCA or dollar cost average is going to be your best bet. Um, obviously, taking into account your bills and doing your responsibility, uh, you know, take care of your responsibilities before, you know, messing up anything else. But let's let's measure from this top section here. So this is Monday where we touched that 72, almost 73K. And then we fell back down to about the 65k area and that's about a 10 percent dump now realm of possibility could we see a 30 percent dip from where we are now let's see where that's gonna put us if we did fall 30 percent because that is definitely possible 46 now could we see a 46 48k bitcoin uh post having or even next week before the having it's possible, but I think it's unlikely because I think there's just too much support at these various levels, especially as you can see here. Anytime Bitcoin comes anywhere below or near the 65K range, there's just a lot of support to pick that baby up, right? So that's, that's a new wall right there. So the blast through at 65K, then you got 62, and then you got what, 50, so 62... 65, 62, 60, 58 is another one, right? So 58, 57, 55 is another one, and then 52. Like, there's just too many walls. But I mean, yeah, yeah, okay. There's not a lot on the exchanges. ETFs are eating it up. Uh, people are actually still continuing to pull Bitcoin off of exchanges. But we've seen a couple whales moving, a couple old wallets moving. So that's got me not concerned, but kind of just being cautious. Like, what are they planning? They're moving old wallets. They're sending to centralized exchanges. Maybe they're getting ready to take profits. Maybe they're getting ready to trade out of Bitcoin into something else. Or maybe they're some of these older wallets are moving out of the altcoins into Bitcoin. So there's a lot of variables at play here, and I don't have the answer. I don't think anybody has the answer. And anybody that's telling you they have the answer on YouTube is probably full of themselves. Um, I know there's some great technical al uh, analysts out there, but I would just be careful. All I know is it's a red day today, right? Friday, we took a hit. I took the opportunity to go ahead and grab some while I could, and I'm going to continue to grab some every now and then. But Bitcoin plunges to 66K, altcoins tumble 10 to 15%, ugly day for risk assets, uh, says this article here from Coindesk, um, where the... Uh, 
Friday as risk off sentiment in traditional markets amid flared up geopolitical risk spread over digital assets. It's fast downward afternoon action during US trading. Bitcoin plunged to 66K after having challenged the 71K level just hours earlier. At press time, Bitcoin has bounced back to 66.7K. Right now, you can see we're sitting at 68. So we actually recovered that level as well. Uh, down more than 5% in the past 24 hours. Ethereum, uh, obviously the second largest cryptocurrency by market cap, fell as much as 12% to 3,100 before the modest bounce cut the decline to 8%. And smaller cryptos suffered even heavier losses in the panicked action. Uh, the broad market Coindesk 20 index dropped nearly 10% with Cardano's, Avalanche, Bitcoin Cash, Filecoin, Aptos plummeting 15-20%. The drawdown triggered the largest leverage washout in a month, liquidating $850 million of leverage derivatives trading positions across all digital assets. Coinglass data shows some $770 million of those positions were longs betting on rising prices caught off guard by the sudden decline. And then we got a chart here of liquidations. Um, it looks like March still has that record as far as uh, longs liquidated. But yesterday was a pretty big day for the longs to get liquidated. So bears and bulls, it's, it's a constant fight, constant battle. Sometimes the bears get overextended, they get wrecked. The longs or the, the bulls get overextended, they get wrecked. And then this consistent, consistent dance in the market just continues to happen. Um, but I'm still bullish long term on Bitcoin. How long, though? That's a good question. Like, if we were to go on our Bitcoin bull rally, right? Let's switch over to the daily. How long could we go before we see, you know, the previous or past bear markets, right? Where we hit new all time highs back in the day, right? 2017. Uh, we're riding high on life. Um, don't take profits because we had we held too long, and then get wrecked. And then we have this long duration here, which if we start from about this point to this point, that is 972 days. So a few years. Could we see that? And could it be extended? Right. So the gains aren't going to be as high as the past. Right in past halvings, right? We might be going, there might have been a, a what was it? A 1200% um, increase, 800% uh, increase. Could we see a 200 or 400% increase from where we are now? Yeah, but how long would that ride last? Is this going to be a short, like, you know, one of those, uh, what do you call, parks? Like, really fun rides, but they're just too short-lived, right? Like the Hulk or something. Really fun, but it's just, over in a flash. I'm hoping it will stay extended, right? Especially now that we got ETS involved and institution really like doubling down on cryptocurrencies and not just cryptocurrencies, but trying to tokenize various assets. Um, I, I, I hope and believe, and this is just my personal opinion, not financial advice, that it will be an extended rally and not a short lived rally. But how long would that last? Would it go to Q1 of 2025 and that's it? We're done, back down. Maybe getting back down to, let's say, you know, 80K, 75K um, bear market, chop sideways for 900 plus days. Who knows? Who knows? It's, it's just too many variables to take into account. But I can tell you that the traditional markets are not performing as well as Bitcoin and some of the other ones. Just statistically talking about these assets. Treasury bonds in the U.S. dollar DXY surged as traders flocked to hedges, while key U.S. equities indices, the S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100, slipped 1.7% in an hour ahead of the close of trading session. Gold long considered a haven asset surged past 2400 to new all-time high before pairing its gains while oil ticked 1% higher. Digital asset investment firm Rise Labs. Formerly Sino Global, uh, Sino Global Capital said in Friday commentary to anticipate some short-term market softness for crypto assets due to upcoming tax season. However, it has maintained a more constructive long-term look, expecting relief for the asset class as policymakers will slow quantitative tightening and potentially adjust monetary policy. Right, we got the 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 rate cut possibly coming in the future during the future FOMC meeting. 
but uh, and when, when that happens, we could see uh, the assets, a number of them, do pretty well. But that's a uh, par for the course, I guess you could say. Like this is not our first time, not going to be our last time. And to me, this is nothing, right? For our drop that we had this week, this is nothing. But of course, news will will make it a lot bigger than it really needs to be. Uh, I mean, if we look back here at March where we hit our new all-time high and we fell down to that 60K area, which would have been a good opportunity for me to buy a little bit more. Um, I missed a boat. By the time I looked at the charts, I think it was already back up to like 64, 65. So I missed a boat. But that was a 17% drawdown back in March. Uh, whereas this one on Friday was not much not as big right so eight percent seven percent drawdown now if you look at it on the daily we're making higher highs well besides this march one so there's the high 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 so we're making higher highs and we're making higher lows so here's the low low right here and another low right here higher highs higher low uh technically we could probably draw you know draw ourselves a couple lines and say that we're in a wedge, which I believe a lot of TA uh, people are saying we are in right now. So let's adjust this real quick. So let's say we chop around in here. Eventually, it's going to tighten. And then we're either going to break out and go up or we're going to break down and go down. But you can see I got a couple of legacy lines in here. So a couple of purple and a couple of yellow and the blues are deep legacy. Um, that's where I'm keeping my eyes on. But this is a whole new area. This entire top section right here where I don't have much of legacy lines, this is all new because there is there is nothing that we can go off of, right? I mean, we could go off of November 2021, um, right, where where we made these, these previous highs, but everything above that is new territory. Like, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen up here. So I'm not worried about that. I'm just watch, sitting back, watching the chaos, and enjoying it, to be honest. It's, it's kind of funny to watch people get wrecked. It's it's not nice, but it's funny. Um, uh, if, you, if you say it's not funny, you're lying to yourself. Um, it's not funny to pick on people. It's not funny to bully people. But when people overextend themselves and they ape into these meme coins and degen out and stuff like that, there's nothing, I mean no disrespect to the degens out there and some of the people, but when they ape into or they go, you know, they put a, a massive amount of their capital into these meme coin, hoping to do well and then get wrecked, then you can't blame anybody but yourself, dude. Sorry. Like, don't do that. Like, put 1%, put 5%, 10%. Don't put 80%. Don't put 100%. But they're hoping to change their lives overnight. They ape in and then they get wrecked. But yeah, a lot of liquidated were, um, or longs were liquidated last night or yesterday, but not surprising, par for the course. Um, it has not changed my point of view on crypto or Bitcoin in the long term. J uh, JP Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon warned that April 12th that the persistent inflation, geopolitical tensions, and the Fed's quantitative tightening efforts threaten an under otherwise positive economic outlook. Uh, we got a statement here. We have never truly experienced the full effect of quantitative tightening on this scale. The head of target largest U.S. bank by assets said in the first quarter earnings results announcement, adding that the market is likely to be weighed down by persistent inflationary pressures, which may likely continue. So it kind of feels like Bitcoin's being held down, right? And I was thinking, and this is just me, you know, putting my tinfoil hat on. I was thinking that maybe the institution don't want Bitcoin to pump yet, right? We don't want Bitcoin to go to 150K, 200K, 130K yet because we're still accumulating, right? BlackRock, all the ETFs, all the institutions, we're gobbling, we're gobbling, we're, you know, hungry, hungry hippos trying to get as much Bitcoin as possible before it goes on that full on bull run. I mean, technically, this is a bull market right now. Yes, we have a drawdown, 8%, 10%. Normal par for the course, nothing new there. This has constantly been happening, but for the new people, this is like, whoa, what happened? You know, should I should I sell at this position, which they're selling at a loss because they bought at the 69K, the 68K range, whatever it might be. But most of us who bought over here, if not over here earlier, are way up, right? 
Um, and I'm sure like many of you, we're all trying to have at least one Bitcoin. Now, institutions have thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of Bitcoins. I understand that, but they're institutions and they got that capital to do that. You and I, the smaller average person, blue collar, we're just trying to get to that one Bitcoin, right? We're just trying to stack as much as possible, as many sats as possible, because we're trying to build that financial wealth for that, um, you know, that, that backing, so to speak, for our family for the future, right? Because I know I cannot work the rest of my life, you know, retirement. That's another thing, too. My wife actually asked this question. I want to answer this because I didn't get the answer. How much Bitcoin does, and I saw this in a video, the U.S. government have? Three recent seizures alone put more than 200,000 Bitcoin and the government's conference, coin and analyst, public filings by crypto firm 20C or 20 Co, 21 Co, even after selling 20,000 Bitcoin to US holdings or worth more than 5 billion. And so the wifey asked me, why don't they put that into the social security, right? Why don't they put that into programs, right, that benefit the people of the United States? And so my mindset is, is maybe they're waiting for this bull run. Maybe they're waiting for a Bitcoin to hit that 125, 130, 150, $200,000 uh, price target before they start taking more. Because they have taken profits, right? You know, some of the Silk Road, some of the mountain, whatever assets they, st they, they got, you know, Bitfinex hack, whatever it might be, they have taken profits. Um, but she did raise a point. Like, if you have that $5 billion, Right. And, and especially because we, 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 we see these political figures get into a room and argue about various things and not approve a bill because they're not getting X for their project or they're not getting Y for their charitable donation or, or foundation like this money. Why don't, why don't they use that to help out and fund certain aspects, you know, feeding people, uh, helping children that are, are, you know, been abandoned or neglected or have health issues. Uh, social security, like why is the US not using this money that they already have to do something with it? And I can only speculate that whoever's got the trigger finger or has got the button to be like, yeah, let's sell, you know, X percent is probably going to wait till Bitcoin hits, right? Because right now the US is the largest uh, um, or the, the country itself it, uh, or the government itself ha is the biggest crypto or bitcoin holder out of all countries china's number two so i'm waiting to see how things pan out but she raised that she asked she randomly asked me that question i was like that's a good question why aren't they you know helping out but the point is is i can't depend on the social security like yeah i got a 401k i got a Roth ira right like i even have some gold like i'm diversifying myself because i got two boys and a wife to take care of if i leave this earth right now what's going to happen are they in a good position are they not in a good position? Well, if they're not in a good position, there's stuff I still need to do. There's stuff I still need to take care of, yada, yada, yada. So I'm trying to get our family squared away to a point to where I can I can live in peace. I can I can pass on this world in peace knowing my family is going to be taken care of, right? I already made arrangements. Everything's taken care of. I just need to stack them sats and get as much as possible. So that way, you know, if we need to take profits, which I have done to help pay out, pay bills, take care of debts, whatever it might be, great. But I want more, substantially more, to maybe take care of my children, my children's children, right? Maybe go to their college, get their college fund going, whatever it might be. So that's what I'm looking forward to. But I, I don't know how Social Security is going to work for me earlier. Now, I know they raised the age here in the United States. I think it's 67 instead of 65. And I think the longer you wait, like 70, the more you get back or some shit like that. But the problem is, is I can't sustain the amount of work ethic that I have long term. I mean, I am constantly working my nine to five after work, in between work, weekends, like my wife works Monday through Saturday. And then sometimes she doesn't even uh, have a day off and we're at events. We're promoting for, for her company uh, in the medical marijuana field. Like it's just nonstop and we have to do that. We have to maintain this pace to keep up. It's not like our debts outweigh our income, but in order for us to live comfortably, especially with inflation on top of maintaining our, our debts and maintaining, bringing it down and stuff like that, you know, the, the house is the biggest thing we have. The cars are paid off. 
but like it's a constant struggle day in and day out just to keep up with these things and if it is for me and i'm more comfortable and well off like i i'm blessed to have what i have i'm not sleeping in a cardboard cardboard box on the side of uh of, of main street downtown jacksonville duval baby i'm in a house i got a car i am blessed i got food my kids are fed they got clothes like i am blessed to what have what i have so i can't imagine somebody who has less than what we have trying to make it work in this situation like it's not it's not it's not good like they're that's i see why they're struggling but they're not getting the help that they need you know how hard it is for a veteran to get the help that they need right not only to put their pride to the side but ask for help but just to go through the fucking paperwork and to get the right contacts it's a pain in the ass man it's a pain in the ass they don't make it easy oh the aid's out there they just need to apply the help's out there they just need to go ask what they need is out there they just they just don't do it they choose to be homeless they choose to do this they choose to do that and yeah granted some of them do have uh addictions that don't put them in the right spot i understand that but like Sometimes when you go to get help, it's a maze of paperwork. It's a conundrum of problems. It's a lot of if this, then that. You got to do this. It's, it's, it's stupid. So why isn't the U.S. government that has that money on standby using that to help out the American people? I think it's because they're waiting for the next bull market. And I, I pray that they will take profits and do put back into the u.s economy the people x uh, etc cetera, etc cetera. we'll see now that my rant is done i'm off my soapbox crypto flash crash uh what caused the, the collapse on friday let's see if we can find this real quick what well, a decline started early on friday accelerated around noon that's when small declines became double digit losses there weren't any major news items out in the crypto world today but the kind of volatility can often hit at the end of the week or weekend at the first time in a while that's what we got today uh there wasn't a lot of good news for cryptocurrencies this weekend hotter than expected inflation reported earlier this week caused an increase in interest rates and a drop in tech and growth stocks which have traditionally correlated with falling crypto values it just took a while for the market to process the news we have had us sec issue wells notice for uniswap which was not good but we knew it was coming at least I did. Um, and the market has been fighting to get clarity around what's legal and what's not. But the SEC has chosen legal action against high profile counterparts like XRP and Coinbase. Yet the SEC has also lost most of those battles. So it's not clear what the outcome of the latest one will be. The lack of, excuse me, with a lack of regulatory clarity, it's not surprising that some investors have chosen to take profits at the market peak. Like, Uniswap, I think hit like 11 something dollars, maybe $17. I should take profits on what little I have left in it, uh, but I didn't. And now it's fallen quite a bit, especially today. Um, but liquidations, you know, the crypto news wasn't good. It wasn't bleak. It was meh. Interest rate or the the, the market statistics, right? What the, the, the interest rates, whatever it might be, played a role, but wasn't a major contributor. But it, once it hit a certain level where these long positions were liquidated, it just was a downhill domino effect. So we know the cause. Is it relevant to the bigger picture? I say no. But what do you guys think? In the live chat in the comments below. Like, yeah, this all these look at, uh, longs were liquidated. We had a big drop Friday. Does it really matter to you? I don't think it does for most of the people that i know in this crypto community i don't think it does like this isn't our first situation it won't be our last our the fundamentals are strong we just keep on moving on that's just as simple as it gets um but yeah i i do think though that the bitcoin having is kind of becoming a buy the rumor sell the news and so what i'm expecting is going into the having we're going to see sell-offs because they bought the rumor and they're selling the news, right? They having's coming, having's coming. Buy, 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 buy. Having's about to happen. Sell, 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 sell. Having happen. Sell, 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 sell. Chop sideways. Stabilize. Uh, start marching towards new all-time high. 
And you can see on coin uh, coin market cap, everything on the right here where I'm circling is just following each other, right? Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, XRP, Dogecoin, Cardano, Avalanche, Sheep, like everything is, they all did the same drop, chop, stabilize, keep it moving. Some of them are green, right? Like the stable coins obviously are, are, are more green than, than others. Ton coin looking pretty resilient. Um, $6.74, which kind of sucks because I bought some at $7, I think, or I converted at $7. Uh, so that took the L, so I'm negative right now, but whatever. Um, you got to convert those mining profits somehow, man, right? Got to take profits on, on whatever you mine. V-Chain recovered pretty well, marching back up already while everybody else is in the red. So some assets did good. Caspa, right, back down to $0.12. Cents. I, I, don't, I don't think we could get over $0.13 cents to save our lives. But, yeah, we got the having in six days. Um, I asked some of my comrades in the crypto mining space if they're doing a live stream because they, they are. Um, if they wanted some company, if I have the availability to jump on a call or something like that, I will. But, you know, six days from now, it's going to be Friday, maybe early Friday night, early Saturday morning, maybe. Um, but we're go I go by block height. I don't go by whatever this is, right? So this time sped up on us a couple times because of the bitcoin network hash rate increasing and stuff like that matter of fact if we look at the bitcoin network hash rate what is it right now so it's not near an alt a new all-time high we did a new all-time high on march 24th of 714 right now we're sitting at 586 so yeah just look at that just straight up not straight up but like consistently you know move from china right china shuts down uh more mining farms right move to the u.s pick back up and u.s is dominant in the bitcoin network hash rate so we'll see how things go let's look at ethereum real quick while we're here what's ethereum doing on the daily yeah so ethereum Ethereum not exactly following Bitcoin 2 to T. Hit that 4K mark. Came down. And this was what? March? Yeah, so it came down in March about 25%. Jeez. Uh, to that 33,000 range. And then from the high to the current low or recent low, 24% from 4,000. So it's a, it, it came down 1,000. Fees are not where I would like them to be. Like, I withdrew. I'm not sure if you guys paid attention to it, but um, Coinbase has been having some issues, and it kind of got me concerned. So any assets on there, I was like, yo, I'm going to I'm gonna move. I'm going to get the hell out of here. What's up, Red Panda Money? Thank you for stopping by. Let me say what's up to everybody real quick. But I just wanted to say that Coinbase is having issues, um, and, and it concerned me, right? Not only is Solana having network congestion, but Coinbase is having issues, and I didn't like it. So I did get some assets. Now, again, what I have on the centralized exchanges and what I always preach to everybody is if I lost it, it's not going to kill me, right? It's not going to bankrupt me. It's not going to ruin me. Um, if you're using centralized exchanges, you need to be in a position to where if you did lose it, just basically like if you put it in there, you better just count that sucker gone. Because if they did lose it, right, the SEC shuts them down, they get hacked, whatever, that's it, right? Done. Um but because they were having some issues and they weren't inspiring confidence and I was seeing things on Reddit and Twitter, I was like, you know what, bet. I'm going to take this, move it over here. I'm going to take that, move it over here, um, which I did. So, but good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Dave's FinTech, thank you for coming to our FinTech channel. Thank you for stop stopping by early. Tencent, Tencent, Tyson, thank you for stopping by. Dan San, Automatic Beats, Crypto Craig, Gordon Murray, Bruce, how you doing? Love the channel, Serpent X. I'm looking to buy the fog hashing C2 unit for my uh, C21 and what's minor. Cool. I like that. I like that. Uh, let me go ahead and put it on here real quick while we're chilling. Um, and I can't find any videos of immersion prepping and teardown of these machines. So I have the, I don't have the M60, but the what's minor M31 or M30S. Let's look at the what's minor. What's minor M60 should be the same, right? Yeah, so it should be the same, right? So uh, let's see. 
what you're going to want to do, and I'm just going to go using the pictures, right? You take off the fans, front and back, there's fans, and then there's two screws on either side of the control board right here. Um, and when you lift up, don't just yank it, lift up, and you're going to have two ribbon cables, one for the going to the power supply, one for the communication, and you want to disconnect those, and then there's um, four screws holding this power supply plus the bus bar over here. There's a video I did already on prepping the What's Minor M30. I have to find it for you. Um, let's see here. And you just disconnect the screws in the bus bar. You disconnect the fans. There's a fan in the power supply that you have to remove. Now, on the back of the What's Minor power supply right here, there might be just two screws holding in the back side of that power supply that the fan is connected to. But if you don't have the one, you have to dig deeper and you have to take the cover off. You see these three screws at the top? You have to take that cover off. There's three on either side. One might be covered by the label. You take that cover off and then you have to remove the fan disconnected. It's probably going to be glued down with that white silicon or silicone. And you have to be gentle, but you're going to have to unplug the power supply fan, put everything back together with no fans on it, and then you can... Uh, use the air to liquid tool to flash the firmware but make sure it's working on air before you even dunk it bro uh but let's see here m30s so i, I had some issues i got some updates coming for you right here so tear down of what's matter m30s preparing asic for immersion cooling go it's not the m60 but it's going to be exactly the same okay look on my channel Go to the uh, go to my channel. Go to magnifying glass. Type in M30s, and you'll see all the videos I did on the M30, and that should apply to your what's minor. As far as the S21, I just did one for the S19K, and it's basically the same. And you should be able to, um, you know, follow similar steps. Let's see here. Brains OS out of the box. Bitmain, release stock versus blah, 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 immersion kit. Where did it go? Where did it go? It's got to be somewhere in here. How to install brains, complete. I don't know where it is. Um, It's got to be somewhere. Bitmain tear down prep for immersion right here. So Bitmain S19 tear down and prep for immersion cooling. So this one right here, right? Then that's how I get the fans out of the power supplies. I remove the fans in the front and back, yada, 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 so on and so forth. But I'm using the Epic control board. So if you're going to use brains or third-party firmware to flash your miner, flash it before you dunk it, okay? Hopefully that helped you out, brother. Take care, Bruce. Hit me up on Twitter or DM me in the Discord. Um... Golden Wolf, J. Bohannon, Chris Hannon, good morning to you. Krypton McKell, thank you for stopping by and bringing over the fam. Tech Man, Sam Fisher, Chuck Danger 87, Fourth Cone, Hereby Service, Head of There. Is that how to say it? Yeah, bro, VA is not easy to deal with. Virginia is not easy to deal with? Why not? Uh, Red Panda Money talking to everybody, Crypto Craig and all that good stuff. Crypto Pounder 4, Gene Francisco, Fran Francos, Francos. Sorry if I butcher your name. Sh smash the like, bros. I like your name. Go ahead and smash that like. And that is it. All right, cool. Let's keep on rocking and rolling. Hong Kong listed Bitcoin's ETF could unlock up to 25 billion in demand. We talked about Hong Kong's ETF coming in the future. And what's funny is, is I didn't know this. China, China, like Hong Kong kind of feels like it's its own thing in China, like its own entity, place, um, or if its own political whatever, like that's, it's very weird. And, and I could be completely wrong. I'd be, I'm interested in learning though. Maybe I should need to do, uh, do a, uh, watch a documentary on it, but it feels like Hong Kong is separate from China, but they're coming out with the ETF and that could be new funds flocking into Bitcoin. So that's pretty good. Bitcoin having countdown continues uh, with one week to go. Yes, we just saw that. Six days, eight hours and something, some, some, some to go before the halving. Stay tuned to your favorite crypto content trader or content 
uh, creator or uh, trader, miner, whatever that's doing a live stream, if they are doing one, um, interested to see how things go. The having highlights why Bitcoin needs to be upgraded. Higher fees from Ordinals and BRC20 may be good for miners, but they risk pushing activity to a fragmented world of L2s, L2s and harming adoption of Bitcoin around the world. Proposals of OpCat and CTV would upgrade the network and allow more innovation at the chain level, says Bobby Bodley, Bot Bodley CEO of uh, Bio Bi Bion Q IQ, I don't know, and Ordinals Marketplace. So the having uh, is this is why Satoshi programmed it to happen. Like th this is a needed upgrade for Bitcoin, a needed. Uh, patch if you will but will bitcoin continue to grow and will that growth impact bitcoin i think there there's going to be a balancing act right whether or knows brc20 uh you know switch over to the lightning network or they have to adjust something or whatever um the having highlights why bitcoin needs and i agree with the statement now this is an opinion piece i'm not going to read it all to you uh, but I do believe that Bitcoin is going to need consistent updates, patches, maybe uh, new fixes. And it, but, but the way Satoshi, the funny thing is, the way Satoshi set it up, it was good for the long haul. We're making it congested. We're making it not work. We're making the fees go up because we are introducing new variables and new activities and new BRC20s and blah, 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 blah. So... But Satoshi basically set it up in, in, in a way that, like, it's good. We just need to take care of it, right? We just need to take care of the network. We need to make sure it's secure. We need to make sure it's online. We need to make sure transactions are processing. You know, like, as long as we, we keep it going and secure, it should take care of itself. But there are going to need to be some adjustments made along the way. I agree with that. Now, our uh, one of our colleagues, the Beginner's Block has a guide here or not a guide but an article exploring the revolutionary era uh revolutionary era of the real world asset rwas now rwas is a big topic right you're seeing that from all your favorite content creators out there rwa rwa real world assets and we've seen tokenization of real world assets already and there's different projects out there and we even heard blackrock talk about how to tokenize RWAs, real world assets, right? And they got build, uh, which is basically build, but kind of like the word hodl with the L swap. So we're gonna see, like we have fractional shares of like Tesla, Apple, Google, Alphabet, Facebook, Meta, whatever. We're gonna start to see real world assets, physical assets being digitized and fractionally, like we could, we could buy like with one thing I I would talk about with one of my friends the other day. He was like, so if I buy this, like I own part of your part of your car, like how does that work? I I own this little tiny piece of your tire, your wheel, right? Like I own I own the hubcap or I own the spare tire. Like how does that work? It, you're basically turning these physical assets into fractional shares that people can get into. Now there's different use cases and there's different projects taking advantage of it, but I would urge you to take a take a look at this beginner's block um, blog article about understanding RWA tokenization, which is the conversion of physical assets into digital tokens on blockchain. These tangible assets encompassing a wide spectrum ranging from real estate properties to precious metals to intellectual property rights and luxury collectibles. V chain is a big one, right? I'm a I love V chain. I've, I've been involved in V chain. I, I do have a small, small bag of V chain. I believe in the long term, it's just a few pennies still. Uh, matter of fact, if we scroll down here, where is V chain at? We just talked about it right here. So it's been number 34. It's got a decent market cap, uh, 24 hour volume. It's picked back up while everybody else is falling down. And there's only so much. There's a max supply, by the way, just FYI. And it's only at four cents now for it to climb to be a juggernaut in the top 10 you know that market cap's got to grow exponentially and will that happen from where it is right now probably not i think it and caspa are having a hard time getting new market cap so it can climb up the charts but we'll see how things go but yeah the digit uh, dig the digitizing ownership through blockchain rwas 
Uh, tokenization unlocks a myriad of financial opportunities, including fractional ownership, transparent transactions, and automation of... Like, we've seen this also with artwork. I forgot the name of the company that hit me up. Uh, I think I was supposed they wanted to do a sponsorship with me, but we you know what I'm talking about the big one where there's like this piece of art and then everybody can own a piece of it and then when it gets sold they all get a percentage of the rewards it's yada 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 whatever that company was um it's similar it's similar to that right so yeah if you if you participate in RWA tokenization they're tokenizing physical assets whether that is real estate um, IP whatever it might be, and you're buying a percentage or a portion of it. Um, and this is going to be big, right? So D-pins and RWAs is probably what you're going to hear about this bull cycle. It's all about, it's going to be a lot of talk about that. You know, last time it was DeFi, DGENs, meme coins. Well, meme coins is still a thing. So I don't know. I, I'm just saying that the words RWA and D-pin, so decentralized physical infrastructure, and real world assets are gonna be some hyped up projects. The problem that I see here is so many projects are gonna have their own method of dealing with RWAs that there isn't gonna be one true clean process, right? Like a standard. Um, and then, you know, one product's gonna do well, the other products are gonna suffer, so on and so forth. But just keep your eyes out on RWAs and D-pins. Um, first mover America's Uniswap token slides is SEC lawsuit. We knew the Wells notice was coming. It was just a matter of time. I'd be interested to see how this goes because now you're dealing with XRP, Coinbase, and Uniswap. What if the lawyers from all three teams get band together to argue against the SEC? I wouldn't doubt that they're already doing that secretly, but I, and, and but not being there for each other at the physical uh, court appearance and, and uh, disputes, right, at, in the courthouse. But... You got DeFi, you got centralization, and then you got a crypto project or a centralized exchange, crypto project, and DeFi um, that SEC is trying to take on. Will they win? I hope not. Because right now the SEC leadership is just pushing more and more people away from the U.S. than they are inviting. And they, they keep saying that the rules are clear that the same financial rules applying to traditional assets apply to crypto, but everybody keeps saying, no, 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 that, that, that doesn't work that way. It's not clear. It doesn't provide us the information we need. As uh, That's Joey, baby. China has a Trojan horse in the U.S. bank mi Bitcoin mining infrastructure. This was interesting to me. So China holds an alarming amount of power over Bitcoin miners in the United States. Congress should act to scale back the country's influence. How are you, how, what? Are you talking about scaling back? How, how is the U.S. going to stop China's influence on Bitcoin? If they have that much hash rate, they have that much hash rate. Cryptocurrencies are rapidly becoming a critical piece of the United States economy and financial systems. Hang on, this is probably Joey. Hey, Bubba, Mama's is asleep and I'm live streaming. What's up? No, not right now. She'll call you back. All right. Bye. My son knows better than that. He knows better. I always live stream at this time. Um, so basically, the rise of Bitcoin also brings a net, uh, the, the need for increased regulatory guardrails similar to other emerging areas, yada, yada, yada. The threat of China continues to emerge at the center of those discussions. The U.S. has answered perceived tech technology threats from companies like Huawei, TikTok, China. Why do we keep bringing those up? The risk within cryptocurrencies is even more alarming because Bitcoin miners represent a potential silent, sentient hardware layer uh, integrated directly into U.S. energy. Oh, they're worried about Chinese miners in the U.S. I thought, I, from my mindset, I thought they were talking about monitoring, managing China's mining infrastructure. Like, you can't do anything about that. It's their country. Um, given the scope of the risk, uh, it is beyond time for regulators to act and ensure Chinese mining technology has zero chance to cripple Vado US. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? The ASICs aren't going to do that. So they're, they're, the mindset to me, from what I just read in this short time frame, 
is that they're worried that the ASICs that these Chinese mining operations are using are going to hurt the grid, the infrastructure, the power, uh, the power uh, providers. That's not how that works. Now, they could use other means to impact the power grid or the electrical grid here in the United States. And, and there's constant attacks. And that's because we have horrible infrastructure and horrible guardrails at critical infrastructure points, which has been expressed many of times and advised to upgrade many of times. We have way too many things on the internet or exposed to the internet. And you can see those things online. You can remote into a hydropower plant in New York. I've seen it. It's way too easy. So worried about mining operations that came from China over to here that are mining with their ASICs and you're concerned? Like, don't worry about that. that that's nonsense. That's nonsense. It does require substantial power to uh, to run these mining equipment. Yada, yada, yada. ASICs. China dominates the supply of ASICs for Bitcoin mining. Now, that is another... I understand that, right? So, what the name of the company... Oh, what is it called? USA ASIC Manufacturer. Manufacturers. I just talked to them. Oh my God, how did I forget their name already? ASIC North. So they're they're saying that too much of the ASIC manufacturing is dominated by China. I, I understand that. But there are some solutions and uh, new US companies, and I don't have it off the top of my head, um, that are trying to get some of that market share and stop letting China, like Bitmain and What's Miner, dominate the ASIC space, right? Working with whatever. And look at this. These ch uh, chips designed in China are manufactured by TSMC. TSMC is, is tai tai uh, Taiwanese, right? Taiwan. And they're going to have fabs here in the U.S., right? So it doesn't matter where TSMC is because they got fabs coming up here in the U.S. They got fabs in Taiwan. Now they're saying that the chips designed in China are a problem, but like they're just designing the chip. Like what that chip goes on to and what that device or that PCB is utilized as. Like I, I think they're making a mountain out of a molehill. I don't think this is really necessary discussion. Yeah, American manufacturers want to cut into the Chinese supply of ASICs because Bitmain is a dominant force in ASIC manufacturing. There is no doubt about that. Then you have what's minor. Then you got uh, Avalon um, or Canon. Uh, you got a little bit in, in um, what's the other one? Maybe Gold Shell a little bit, so on and so forth. But I, I really think they're making a mountain out of a molehill. But China has a Trojan horse in the U.S. Bitcoin mining infrastructure, basically saying that the Chinese mining firms here in the United States that left China because they couldn't mine there anymore are a Trojan horse in the Bitcoin mining infrastructure. You're, you're, you're using scare tactics to make people worry about what the Chinese are doing again, just like you did with Huawei and stuff like that. I understand some of the concerns and I understand like I don't want my F-22 fighter jet to have a chip created by uh, a, a Chinese uh, chip designer manufactured in China, made in China because they might have, you know, whatever malicious items in the uh, the silicon or the parts within that are used in the F-22 jet. So therefore, I want to build it with Intel here in the United States rather than somebody in China. I understand that, right? National security. But when you start using national security to be a reason why we want we don't want Chinese people to mine within the United States because it's a threat to our national security. It's a threat to our infrastructure, our power grid. Now you're just fear mongering and you're just talking ish, dude. Just chill out. Like I understand both sides, but don't don't make it so much bigger than it needs to be. Crypto miners run down Bitcoin inventory to three year low and a strategic pre happening. So talking about the amount of hardware out there, and yes, it is low as we prepare for the halving but guess what after the halving keep your eyes on the second hand market because guess what there's going to be a lot of selling now there were a lot of selling already right if we look at ebay of older asics so let's say the m30s what's minor 
All right, maybe not as efficient today, but there's a lot of them out there that you can probably go and grab and scoop up for cheap, right? M30S++, they come in different versions, 65 terahash, 100 terahash, 110 terahash. So you just got to find the right ones. But I have a feeling that more and more of this is going to happen. But a lot of the big farms were already swapping out less efficient ASICs for better and more efficient ASICs uh, prior to the halving. And we're just going to see more of that continue on in the future. So just keep your ears open uh, and keep your eyes out on the markets. Uh, what do we got here as we get ready for Red Panda Mining to go live here in a minute? Uh, Bitcoin miners strengthen reserves ahead of fourth halving. We're all doing it. We're just stacking sats as much as possible before the halving. Uh, same thing, right? Bitcoin miners strengthening the reserves, trying to stack as much sats as possible. Obviously, spending to spending what they need to, or converting what they need to. That, that's how some of these ETFs are getting that Bitcoin, right? Miners are making them. ETFs are buying them up at an extraordinary rate. Some of those assets have to be sold to cover the mining operations overhead bills whatever it might be pay employees workers yada 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 etfs gobble it up but they're stacking as much as possible in preparation there's a chart here of bitcoin reserves held by public mining companies and they got mara hud8 riot so on and so forth and you can see how much greater right like mara in march 2022 it was like nine 9.37 bitcoin right so 9370 bitcoin in march 2022 Whereas March 2023, it was 11,470, uh, 11,000, 11.4K 11 Bitcoin. And then March of this year was 17.4 almost Bitcoin. So yeah, stacking them sats as much as possible, preparing for that Bitcoin to hit that uh, 150, 130K. But that's uh, pretty much it for today's live stream. If you got any last minute questions, comments, or anything, I'm going to play this video here from Crypto World. We're going to listen to it together. But if you have any questions, comments, or otherwise, please let me know in the live chat. Otherwise, I appreciate some of you coming back. And even though you don't watch the video live, hitting me up in the comments. I really appreciate you guys. Continue to do that. Um, and let's listen to what Crypto World has to say. about to sue the DeFi platform, and Swan's Steven Lupka explains how spot Bitcoin ETFs and the upcoming halving are driving Bitcoin's price action. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World, I'm Talia Kaplan. Crypto prices in the green today, despite hot inflation data released yesterday, which pushed the market's expectations for rate cuts to September. As of noon Eastern, Bitcoin traded just under $70,000, although the cryptocurrency rose as high as $71,000 overnight. Ether rose slightly to the $3,500 level, and Solana jumped more than 3% to $173. Okay, let's talk about the top stories. DeFi platform Uniswap says it received a Wells notice from the SEC. In a blog post yesterday, Uniswap said the US regulator had sent a letter warning of an impending lawsuit. A Wells notice gives the recipient of the letter a chance to respond and explain why legal action is unwarranted. That's called a Wells submission. Uniswap said in the post that its legal team was taking on the fight with the regulator and in the meantime, all of its products would continue to be available. Uniswap said it doesn't operate an unregistered exchange and that its token is not a security. It also pointed to the SEC's partial loss in court in its lawsuit against Ripple, along with its ongoing legal battle against Coinbase as evidence that the agency doesn't have jurisdiction over the platform. Now, we reached out to the SEC and the agency said it doesn't comment on the existence or non-existence of a possible investigation. Next, we're starting to get a clearer picture of how much money Wall Street's biggest players are spending on spot Bitcoin ETFs. By law, asset managers with more than $100 million under management are required to disclose their holdings once a quarter. Those first filings since the launch of spot Bitcoin ETFs back in January are now hitting the SEC's website. Among those who disclose their holdings, Park Avenue Securities, a New York-based firm with nearly $10 billion in assets under management. Park Avenue held more than $450,000 in the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust at the end of last quarter. Now, these filings are just starting to trickle in. We're awaiting 13 Fs from some of Wall Street's biggest names, which could come as late as mid-May.
All right, for our main story, I spoke with Stephen Lupka, Swan Bitcoin's managing director and head of private clients, about adoption of those ETFs, how inflation and interest rate expectations are affecting crypto markets, and that Wells notice Uniswap received. So Wall Street institutions like Park Avenue Securities bought into spot Bitcoin ETFs in the first quarter. That's according to SEC 13F filings released this week. And of course, those products just launched here in the U.S. in January. Now, you run the private wealth team at a brokerage firm that serves high net worth investors. So I'm wondering, are you also seeing demand from your clients for these new products? Yes. Yeah, so it's been um, record months, like literal all time records for us over the last quarter, best quarter, best month, multiple best months. So we've seen a huge uptick in demand from high net worth investors, family offices, like small and medium businesses uh, and a lot of retirement asset demand, which is interesting because that's for you know, we sell spot Bitcoin, the actual like the actual coins rather than like ETF shares and uh, a lot of demand from retirement investors for the actual coins, even though they now could buy the ETF. So it's been a it's been a record few months. Uh, we've been very busy, but it's a great problem to have in this industry. Uh, you, you build for you hear that. So people want the coin, not the ETFs. They want the actual coin for a long time waiting for moments like that. So Bitcoin was trading back above $70,000 this morning, brushing off inflation data released yesterday, which showed consumer prices rose more than expected last month. The sign of lingering inflation pushed the market's expectations for rate cuts back to September, which could be bad news, of course, for crypto. So why do you think Bitcoin was trading higher, even with the hot inflation data in the mix? How do you explain that? Yeah, so... You know, there's there's a few angles there. I'll touch on a few points. One is that I think what the market is waking up to. So let's say business as usual, uh, the last 20, 30 years, rates go down, stocks go up, rates go up, stocks go down. That's that's the common perception. But markets are actually operating a little differently, right? We've had very high rates relative to the last decade. And the stock market's been on a tear for the last year. Now, why is that? The reason is because the debt, the federal deficit, the debt is so high. Whenever rates go up, it increases the interest payments on that debt. What are those interest payments except dollars, which are being created from thin air to pay holders of treasury bonds? So actually, as interest rates rise, it's another form of money printing. It's another form of an inflationary force. And that's why I don't envy the position Jerome Powell finds himself in, because if he raises rates, that's inflationary. And if he lowers rates, that's also inflationary. And I think the market has been a little slow in parts to fully uh, internalize this new reality. But either path the Fed takes is going to result in more dollars being issued into financial markets, which improves liquidity and drives up asset prices. So I think All right. in part, Red is live. like Bitcoin and the market is realizing that. Y'all head on and the there. other story is that I think go Bitcoin is just. Thank you so much for stopping. Oops. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'm going to get some food and go get this IT repair done. Um, you guys go head over to Red Panda. Congratulations to Seb Fintech. Uh, strong member of the community. Uh, thank you also for 25K subscribers. Uh, appreciate you guys. Thanks so much. Um, but yeah, that's it for today. Do me a favor on the way out. Hit the like button. Make sure to get subscribed. Hit the notification button to stay up to date. As well as check out additional links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here. And uh, yeah, let's go see what uh, Red Panda's doing. Oh, they get demonetized. Turn it off. I could bump it, but you guys can't listen to it. All right, get out of here. Real quick. I agree with you, tech man, 100%.
I'll talk to you on Discord or offline sometime once I get caught up in all my work. Take care. Thank you.